SMTP is a protocol for exchanging email messages, but it does not define the message format that is being exchanged. RFC 5322 defines syntax for email messages. We can compare these two to HTTP and HTML. SMTP is similar to HTTP in that it is in charge of transmission and RFC 5322 is similar to HTML in that it is the format of the exchange data. Mail messages have header lines followed by a blank line and then the message body. Message header includes, for example, to, from, and subject. Note that these are different from SMTP commands of mail from or receipt to. These are within the message itself. As we mentioned, the body of the message is an ASCII characters. So if binary objects included, they should be encoded and decoded accordingly. A question that you might have by now is that how the user agent receives the messages from the mail server. SMTP is in charge of delivering messages from user agent to the SMTP sending server and from the SMTP sending server to the SMTP server of the recipient until it is stored in the user mailbox. From there on, mail access protocols like POP, IMAP, or HTTP, in case of webmail, deliver the emails to the user. POP3, Post Office Protocol version 3, which is the simplest mail access protocol, is also a command and response protocol that enables the client to log in using a username and password to the mail server and list or retrieve the emails waiting in the mailbox. POP3 is limited in that it does not have a stateful transactions and it does not support message save and foldering and organization at the server. This figure shows a sample POP3 interaction to first list, then retrieve and delete the listed emails one by one. Another, more complete mail access protocol is IMAP. It also includes the capability to keep all messages in one place in the server. It also allows the user to organize messages in folders and keep state across sessions. Both of POP3 and IMAP are mail access protocols. As we discussed, when webmail available, you can also access your emails on your server through web protocols. Let's finish our brief electronic mail discussion with a few notes about its security. As you can guess from what we discussed, email is not inherently secure. First, the communication is not encrypted. It is plain text and human readable. Therefore, if someone intercepts email communication, they can understand the contents of the communication. Spamming is another problem with emails. Receiving a bulk of unwanted emails is a problem. These unwanted emails, knowingly or unknowingly, can bring viruses or worms to the end systems. There is also a possibility of a sender claiming another identity. These problems are not inherently addressed in the electronic mail system, but could be solved with additional mechanisms including encryption, filtering, scanning, and server authorization.